Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. My wife has left me for another man, and I was directed here to start the process. Me and my wife have known each other since November of 2013 and started dating immediately. At the time of typing this, I'm 28 and she's 24. We met when she was 17 and I was 21. One year in, it got kind of rocky, but we put it back together and stuck with it. We got married on May 16th of 2016. We had our baby boy two years ago. Just eight days ago, she told me she was seeing another man and that it was physical. She had been seeing him for three weeks at that point. I asked her if she thought I should leave and if I should take our son with me. She nodded, so I just went into the other room and went to bed, just in shock. Stared at the ceiling the entire next day in between taking care of our son. The next day, I threw what I could in my car and left. I want to clarify, I have a terrible drinking problem and it has consumed me. And now that it has ruined my life, I can't let it ruin my son's life. I'll be going to meetings immediately. We've been happy together all these years, made sacrifices for one another, and have enjoyed each other. We lived in a city for three years after we got married as she was advancing her career. I was managing a retail store and making really good money. She was managing a restaurant and she was making really good money, but we never saved. We've always been terrible with our spending. On Valentine's Day of 2017, we tried for a baby and got pregnant on the first try. Our debts were piling up and we had no health insurance. I quit my managing job so I could get a different job and qualify for insurance for her. You never know what can happen during a pregnancy, you know? We decided she should keep hers since she loved her job and is very passionate about it. I got another job and got insurance. That November, we welcomed our son into the world on her due date, happy and healthy. The birth was natural and I held her hand through the entire process and watched my son enter this world and even cut the cord. We were so happy and so in love. Once the insurance paid out, I quit that job because it was awful and went back to the same company I was working for. Our debts continued piling up and we wound up with a chapter 13 bankruptcy. We were surviving though. We just lived our lives for a year and a half after that and loved each other and raised our son. She begged me to move to another city for another job offer with the same company and a substantial pay raise. I told her I didn't want to give up what we had there, but she continued pushing and pushing and three months later, I finally said F it and gave in and told her we could move once again and start over in a new city. I gave up everything I loved and what I was doing there and our home that we both loved. We had so much room there and a fenced yard for our son. We moved five months ago and I just wound up working for her for simplicity's sake. Since we were having such a hard time finding a good reliable daycare, there were days where we just worked opposite shifts just to make it work. I felt less of a man and fell into a deep depression, became cold and distant to her and eventually We only had sex once a few weeks. I stopped taking the time to look her in the eyes, hugging her, kissing her, touching her. We became almost like roommates with a kid. We never talked about it though. She ignored me too, but I know she could see the sadness in my eyes. But she just seemed so happy with what she was doing, I couldn't just walk away from that or tell her we needed to go somewhere else. Our apartment was abysmally small, like tiny. We had nowhere to enjoy each other's company like we used to. Nowhere for our sons to just play and run and laugh. So cramped. I should have done something. Gone to a counselor. Tried to find a job that I loved. But I just rotted there. Drowning myself in the bottle every day. I did all the housework, the laundry, dishes, meals, and taking care of our son. I was a drone just grinding through the days. She said she felt dead inside when she told me. My D-Day? She felt nothing. And just had to go and feel again. Feel anything. I died a little inside that day. I completely shut her out and walked away. It took me a couple of days to wake up, but I fought for her, offered forgiveness, offered to try and find religion with her as I'm an atheist and she's a Lutheran. I told her I'd do anything to keep her in my life, to get help from my drinking as I should have years ago. I just wish she would have given an ultimatum before having an affair. She's already walked away though. My heart and soul are so broke right now that I'm having a hard time holding it together and I just want a drink so freaking bad, but I can't. I have to do this for my son. I've got a job, a place to live, and I've got my son. I told her I could forgive her and we could rebuild our lives together. I could give up the bottle, focus on us. I've made so many mistakes. I gave her the same ultimatum she should have given me a month ago, two days ago, and she chose him. I've been asleep for so long and I woke up this week. It's been hell. I can't stop throwing up. I've been having random panic attacks and breakdowns. I was thinking about editing all the screenshots, removing names and places, and just sharing them with you all. 
In those messages, I tried to win her back. She even had the gall to post on Facebook that she was in a relationship after I changed mine to separated. I'm over here reaching out to her and trying so hard and she's already moved on. It's like she's not the same person anymore. I sent her my closing statement from our relationship today. Going forward, we will only talk about money and our son until the divorce. She's going to continue to pay on the bankruptcy and assist me financially as if we default on that or restructure it would make it life hard for all of us, including our son. I'm going to share my closing statement now. Me. One more thing. I'm sorry I fell into such a dark place once we moved to blank. I just wasn't happy there. I was severely depressed. I didn't focus on your needs, physical or emotional. I became even more consumed in the bottle than I ever have. I hid those feelings from you because I wanted to give you the world. I gave up the happiness of having a real home and a real job in blank. I did that for you. I should have gone to counseling. We both should have, especially after your sister's passing. I wasn't there for you through that. I lost my passion to truly live and live through you. I cannot change the things I've done or the choices I've made, but I'm truly happy you found a spark of joy in your life and that will keep me going, along with the joy I find through being with our son every day. I even already considered attempting to find another woman to love, but I can't do that. It won't be love. It will be empty. It won't help anything. And it's wrong. And it is not fair to our son. I've hung all of our pictures here to remind me of the love we had when we truly loved each other. And I'll keep moving forward to make sure our son is loved, happy and healthy. I'm going to find a counselor soon and just talk to someone. Her. We both lost a lot of who we were when we moved to blank. We became shells of ourselves and we let it take over everything. I'm sorry too that I didn't focus on your needs, your feelings, and your happiness. We both were living under a shadow, and it ruined us. I really hope you do go and find someone to talk to, and I hope you really do stay away from alcohol. Our son is everything. I miss him so much, you have no idea. I'm so glad that he has you. I know he's in the best hands possible. Me. But I also want you to never forget that there is no justifying the choices you made either. And you can hate me for that, and that's okay too. I want you to always remember that you gave up on us and your son. We did make a vow and you broke that vow. I'm dropping it now. Have a good life. Update. Well, it's been five months since everything happened and I can finally say I'm back to my old self. My drinking at this point is almost non-existent. I landed a job as an IT technician back in January and worked Monday through Friday 8 to 5. Perfect for daycare while being a full-time dad. So happy to finally leave my retail career behind. I did lose it for a while there in December, having my whole world turned upside down, the anxiety and constant feeling of dread. I drowned myself in liquor. I almost stopped eating entirely, lost 40 pounds, sleeping only a few hours a day. I'm 5'11". I was 180 and dipped all the way down to 140, currently 155, eating normally again. It really hit the fan about a month ago. My wife and the affair partner broke up and got back together numerous times through the months, but last month, I got a random phone call from the affair partner as he found my number in her phone. He was going on about how she was lying to him about still talking to me. Obviously, we still talk. We have a child together. He called me to tell me that he was done with her and that she's pregnant. He asked me if it was mine. I was taken back by that. It's not. She finally tried to reconcile with me. I turned her away. For the first time in years, I feel like I can breathe and make my own decisions. It was my wake-up call to finally get the ball rolling and hire a lawyer. They got back together a few days after that, too. The whole situation is just obscene to me. She's only reached out to see our son twice in this entire time frame, so I shouldn't have any issues getting primary custody. Finally filing for divorce this week. I just wanted to say it does get better. I was blind to just how manipulative and controlling she was, and now that I've been on my own for five months, nothing but good things have come my way. I do still get lonely sometimes, but my son keeps my mind off of things and certainly keeps me busy. It's just a good feeling knowing I don't need her. I don't think I ever did in the first place. I became codependent to a toxic person, the best thing I ever did was finally let her go. We have one reaction from Vegas Satellite 01. If this guy doesn't have the desire to be with a pregnant woman or even want to become a family man, then her relationship is certainly doomed, and you don't want her either. Man, karma seems to be smacking back hard on her right now. The OP replies, That's part of what astounds me, how quickly she got pregnant being with this guy. I've always been the one to drop what I've been doing to take care of our kid. I can already see the relationship crumbling after the kid's born. I put up with a lot of crap when I was with her, and it really did test my resolve. I don't see this man being anywhere near as patient as I was with her. Update. It's almost hard to believe how much time has passed. In three months, it will have been a year since I walked out that door. Life certainly does go on. Don't give up, no matter how low you get. 
Pick yourself up and get it together. Let time heal your wounds. Not many bad days anymore, though I still relive some of the trauma in my dreams. Wake up to wipe a few tears and go back to sleep. I do try my best to not think about it or let it get to me like I used to. Still not completely divorced yet. My lawyer is still finalizing the parenting plan. We both took the parenting class. Judge granted me custody during the action. I doubt getting primary custody will be any sort of issue at this point. She pays me child support and I pay her my contribution to our chapter 13. She has bi-weekly weekend visitation. Even now, after all of this time, it still shakes me a bit to see her with him. They're always together during the exchanges. Seven months pregnant with his kid. Looking that tool in the eyes? Do it because I have to. I certainly don't owe her anything, but I owe it to our son to keep my cool and stay collected. As much as I resent her and her choices, he does deserve to see his mother. I just repeat to myself, in my mind, that she is not the woman I fell in love with. It's just someone that I have a contractual obligation to allow to see my child. The new job keeps getting better. I've gotten two raises and a pretty hefty bonus when I got stuck out at a power district to do tech support, maintenance, and network administration. 8 to 5 Monday through Friday still. Been doing it since March. No complaints whatsoever. I'd also like to note that I had to take a step back and realize I had no stress in my life anymore. Like whatsoever. I can breathe now. I managed to quit smoking over a month ago. Just cold turkey. Not looking back. Realized I didn't need it anymore. I still do enjoy a glass of whiskey at the end of the night though. I refuse to let my vices own me anymore. I've tried to date. Had a few flings at this point. Nobody has set well with us as of yet though. It's almost a chore sometimes meeting and talking to new people. Not to sound too off-putting, but everyone that I've met has just been so needy. I just don't enjoy being glued to my phone anymore. That's okay though. It's nice for the first time since I was a teenager to just feel content. I don't need anyone. It's just me and my boy, and that's all I really need. Playdates with my co-workers kids and trips to the park for picnics. Just vibing in dad mode for sure. My boss has a full-size bouncy house. The kind of ones you see at those crappy pop-up fairs, it's hilarious. No matter how bad your heart aches or how bad you want the other person back in your life, take a step back and remember what they did to you. Remember who you are or who you were before you met them. I took that and ran with it. I grew from it emotionally. You can too. Take the time to care for yourself and stop worrying so much about the cheater. It's made me take a step back and truly realize just how much the world does not revolve around me. When I was with her, it certainly did. Just me and her. Everyone was there for us, but we weren't there for anyone else. Now she's cut off over half her family for this guy. The family who of which I still talk to. Doesn't slap the same though hanging out with my father-in-law and brothers-in-law. Well, like I said, I just wanted to check in. I'll probably make another post after the divorce is final and let you know if anything dumb happens. Right now, my life is just on cruise control and I'm doing very well. To everyone that reads this, that's going through what I did, it does get better with time. Don't chase the solution in the moment. You'll regret it later. Take this time to allow yourself to become a better person. Also, forgive my crappy grammar. Update. Well, a few weeks ago, she had the kid. Had to drive a couple of hours to the hospital she was at to sign paperwork stating that I am not the father. I haven't really been feeling right since. She's been on maternity leave and asked to have our son stay with her for a week. I allowed it. This is the first time I've been away from my child for more than a couple of days. I feel completely out of sync with my routine. Then my dad texted me this morning and said that she must be going for mother of the year with how many photos she's been posting. I know it's just her form of self-validation. Being the perfect mother, I don't think it should bother me, but like hell it does. I almost feel disgusted with myself that it does though. I'm unsure if in some sort of regression, I just feel so down today, want to crawl into a hole, etc. Just have to get the DNA test done to show the court that it's not my kid and it'll be over. My lawyer is collaborating with her to get it scheduled. It's almost been a year, 20 days until my one year anniversary of D-Day. It's getting to the point where I won't keep replaying it all in my head at night, staring at the ceiling. I don't know. I'm doing good, but I just feel numb. I feel I could ramble about it more. I just wanted to talk about it. Thank you all. Update. My divorce is finalized. This will be my final update. Signed and stamped by a judge, it's finally done. I'm divorced as of Thursday. I have sole physical custody of our son and shared legal. I feel indifferent. Just glad it's over. She's still with the affair partner, betting they will get married. Job is still going very well. Can't praise it enough. I keep getting raises. It certainly helped to keep myself occupied through the worst of it. Me and the boy have our own place now. Granted, it's only a rental, a small two bedroom house in a small town for just the two of us. It's perfect. It's funny. I have everything I ever wanted. Still finding relationships to be more of a chore. I'm pretty chill by myself. 
enjoying being lost in the day-to-day -day routine. Of course, there is more spicy stuff that's happened in between, but anytime I share my posts get taken down, so I'll pass this time. Edit. Not taken down, but locked. Don't really know what else to say. I'm single for the first time in 10 years. Wish you all the best with whatever it is you're going through. You're not alone. Thanks for reading my rants, including the ones mods removed, and giving me positivity and people to talk to when I needed it the most. I'll be moving along to the next chapter of my life. We have a closing response from Tersher78. Soul physical custody? Dang. Get that child some therapy for the feelings of abandonment they will feel in life from being abandoned by their mother. I understand your reasons, especially with child abuse involved, but your son still needs help managing all of his trauma. Hope you've been able to stick off the bottle. That's really important too. The OP replies, I only drink on the weekends that I don't have him in strictly with company. I'm not going down that path again. He doesn't need to ever know about the six months that she disappeared. What matters is she has visitation and actively participates. I think she's a little crazy, but she loves her boy, and that's all that I could ever want for him. One more quick thought from, sometimes I am lost. Best of luck, OP. Take good care of yourself and your boy.